I, and that brought back memories of Norman Indy. Norman Indy is the guy who discovered these regenerative properties of the CD34 cells from umbilical cord. And he's, unfortunately, uh, he doesn't get a lot of credit, but he did all the work. He, he demonstrated that you could inject these cells into an animal with a damaged heart, with a damaged liver, a, 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 you know, a damaged brain, and they would seek out that area and they would persist for a period of time. These are human cells in mice and rats. And he showed that they would live up to three months and then they all disappeared. His, interesting enough, his funding, he was funded by the Chinese government. Have you ever seen, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I was looking at these guys, because I didn't, the oldest person I knew was like 60, you know, and I was looking at these, these, these Maoist dudes walking around, and they're like 88, 97, you know, and they're just plunking around like nothing. Well, through, I, I found out through basically connections that work in Norman's lab, that he was actually funded by the Chinese government because they were so concerned about nuclear holocaust and where are they going to get the cells to repopulate their bone marrow and what and, and they thought well cord and so they funded him because the American government didn't get him squat but they initially were they had young soldiers that were were matched to them and they were getting infusions of the young soldier blood right and then they figured out, oh, man, there's even more of these umbilical cords. So they started getting, so all through this, even going back into the late 70s, they were getting umbilical cord infusions like every month, these lead, the Chinese leaders. And I guarantee you this day, they, they all have their source of these, of, of these cells that they get for rejuvenating purposes. Anyway, that's a, I digress. I apologize. So, and, 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 and the key point is, I really think it's the, the proteins that encourage, encourage the regeneration. So the MSCs, they secrete proteins that stimulate regeneration, calms down inflammation, and also modulates the immune system. And they do that in a smart way. So a lot of people worry about safety. You're gonna give me donor cells from, you know, from, from a donor? Well, Dr. Paz already talked about everything is, everything is screened for infectious disease, bacteria, fungi, mycoplasma, any viruses, anything that comes into our, nothing gets into the lab, everything's sequestered, nothing gets into the lab if it has any hint of anything and everything's tested. All the reagents that we get are supposedly sterile. We test them also, we test everything. There's a dossier about that thick on every batch of cells that goes out of that place that demonstrating, so we have complete records from where the cell came from, everything it came in contact with, and to where it went. And so, um, feel, uh, so that's one big safety thing, but the other safety thing is what's gonna happen with these, how, how can you give umbilical cord cells from, from somebody that's not related to me, and how can you give them to me and, and, and rest assured that nothing bad's gonna happen? Well, we've, We've given over 5,000 infusions, and so far, knock on wood, nothing bad's happened. But forget about our data. If you look at, uh, you know, there are thousands of transplants of umbilical cord. This is for hematopoietic restoration. Of course, it has to be matched and all that kind of stuff, but it's been done thousands of times. Back in the 1930s, there was a shortage of blood donors. There was a shortage of blood. And so they used, for, for years, they used the umbilical cord blood. Rather than throwing away, they used it. And guess what? It's full of CD34 cells. So if they're going to hurt you, well, all those people would have dropped dead pretty quickly, you know. There's, a, there's an Indian doctor, and I can't pronounce his last name, but it starts with a B. Bachar or Bacharaya something or other. He's a very smart guy, and uh, I call him Neary. That's a shortening for his first name. And I've actually pub I wrote an article for one of his books on regenerative medicine uh, using umbilical cord and placental, placentally derived products. But anyway, he was the first... He, he published in Lancet, which is kind of the equivalent of, New, you know, like our New England Journal of Medicine in, in, in England. It's a big, big journal. And he, had, he gave 128 patients cord blood. Just the whole cord blood didn't match. I mean, he typed it for, for ABO, but he, there was no HLA matching. They genetically had no idea. But they gave it to 128 patients, and they gave in multiple infusions to 128 patients. Zero side effects. If, if those CD34s were going to cause a side effect, I think in 500 shots, you're going to have a problem. Then, he, and then in the Journal of American College of Surgery in 2005, he published, he given 413 units of cord blood, zero side effects. And since then, he's given thousands and thousands and thousands. He does not waste any cord blood. And, and he's given it to patients for almost any kind of indication you can imagine. And he's never seen any side effects. So 
Dr. Paz is saying this is natural. Of course it's natural if you're taking your own fat and you're taking those cells out and giving it, that's obviously your own cells. If you're taking your own bone marrow, it's obviously your own bone marrow. But what about these umbilical cord cells? What about just the concept of, don't, of, of receiving a cell in your body that's from somebody that's not you? Well, every mother who's ever carried a baby has stem cells in her bone marrow and in her bone 30 years after she had the baby. This was published, this again was in Lancet, I think, yeah, in 2004. So they were doing chest surgery on these women. They were doing open heart surgery, so they were able to access both bone marrow and, and the bone itself. And they took biopsies, and they, they looked for, if the mothers had uh, born a male child, they looked for male DNA in the stem cells, and they found it in every single mother that had given birth to a baby. So as a human race, we wouldn't exist if transplanting a cell that's genetically distinct from your own were harmful, right? And, uh, you know, it used to be, and, and, and I, I talked earlier about how you can take rat, uh, human cells, inject them into a rat, and they, they persist at least for a period of time, and they, and they stimulate regeneration, right? So that's a, another big indicator. And then if you, we used to think that scleroderma, which is a, a disease that affects m women more than men, uh, that there was an association with birth and this, uh, they call it microchimerism, where some of the cells from the baby go into mom. They thought that was an autoimmune reaction. They actually did a prospective trial and proved that that was inversely true. Mothers had actually lower incidence of, 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 of scleroderma. So, um, so the, this, is, this is really cool. Okay, so how many mothers are in here? Okay, was childbirth tough? Is raising a child tough? So what, what would you think the net effect would be on your lifespan? It should shorten it, right? Well, not so. In fact, you live a third of a year longer, at least in this study, a third of a year longer per child you carry. And guess what? When you carry that child, they donate stem cells to you. So it's baby treating mom or giving you a present, you know? But this is only linear up to 14, and I think the suicide rate went way up after that. <laughs> So, okay, well, I'm, I'm about done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you a, a, a patient uh, that this is the, co the cool part of my job. I don't interface with patients that often, but it's the coolest part of my job. I love going into the clinic because I'm mostly the lab guy, right? So I'm mostly in the lab, and when I'm in Panama, I try to get over to the clinic at least one time, and I, I, I like to go on Fridays because that's when people are going home. And so I went over there on Friday. There were three sponsors.